I've been doing this since I was six years old. Can be regarded now, I guess, as a professional. But uh, I've done it all my life, and uh, this is where I work all the time. Uh, this is uh, the underpainting for a painting I have in mind, and uh, of course I haven't finished it yet, but you can see I'm working on the wave action in this painting. This is a completed painting made of a uh, shrimp boat off of Atlantic Beach, North Carolina. And uh, I also added a, a couple walking a lab down here along the, uh, the beachfront. Anyway, I uh, not only paint, but I make models of these uh, boats and things so that I can pose them in my paintings for, uh, for pictures. Uh, you can't take a huge boat and put it in an attitude like it's in a storm. Uh, you have to do that with a model to get that kind of angle on a, uh, on a boat. So uh, as a result, I've built a lot of models of boats to use in paintings, and uh, I don't think you could see that they were models because they're accurate scale models that I've built. This mess is where I work, and most artist studios look sort of like this, although I know a few artists who are, are very, very neat. I do very neat paintings, but the studio is a mess, and I'm kind of proud of that. <laughs> Uh, my mother was a Moravian from uh, North Carolina, from the uh, uh, area near Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and my father uh, was from Richmond, Virginia. But uh, I've always had relatives in North Carolina and always uh, liked the mountains. I fly fish up in the, near Mount Mitchell quite a bit and uh, lived most of my time in North Carolina in the Winston-Salem area. Uh, I'd like to say that uh, in the 1950s, my father moved from Kentucky to Kinston, North Carolina. And uh, I, I double dated with a girl named Coleman Jenkins at that time. And uh, she was three years younger than I was, so uh, I never did date her, but I double dated with her. I think a football player was dating her. But anyway, uh, Years later, I went to a wedding uh, in, in uh, Wilson, North Carolina, and saw her with a young man. I found out that her, her first husband had died as my first wife died. And um, so anyway, she walked in with this younger man who uh, I thought, well, she's, she's going with this younger man. She was a beautiful woman. Um, went to UNC and um, I found out later that the younger man she was with was her brother. So I began to write her because I discovered that she painted also. And she paints to this day and has a, a studio in this house on the porch uh, on the first floor. And she also makes a lot of jewelry and sells a lot of necklaces and the bracelets and, and that kind of thing. So she is also heavily into the arts. Like I say, uh, a lot of people in Winston have bought my paintings, and uh, particularly the western part of the state. And a lot of my paintings are devoted to that area, uh, and, and they were before I got interested in logical paintings. And I started showing in, uh, in Connecticut at the Mystic Maritime Gallery, and I specialized in lobster boats, which is like that model right there. But uh, as a result, I became uh, one of their premier painters of lobster boats, and I entered my paintings in international competitions and won several major awards there uh, as a painter of lobster boats and other types of boats. But uh, anyway, I also do other things besides nautical paintings. I do still lifes. I do... Uh, I refinish guns, I uh, s still build models occasionally, and there's a tugboat model on the desk there that I'm in the middle of, uh, and uh, I'm interested in too many things. I should be interested in one thing, but uh, I'm interested in guns, music, uh, all the arts. 
Uh, I first got interested in Japan. Uh, as I said before, I was born in Tokyo in 1934. And uh, I noticed Japanese paintings. They're such an artistic people that I was attracted by their woodcuts and paintings on silk. And uh, as a result, I think I did my first painting of an iris uh, when I was about six years old. And at that time, uh, Japan was already at war in Manchuria. And uh, we, my parents knew Ambassador Joseph Grew, who advised all Americans to leave Japan because the tensions were becoming too high to live there anymore. In fact, my brother Stuart and I were hiding in the bushes in the compound where we lived one day and we watched Japanese airplanes uh, practice bombing in downtown Tokyo. And I'm sure they were the same aircraft that bombed Pearl Harbor later. And even my nurse, because she learned English in our house, was conscripted to work for uh, Hideki Tojo, who was later hanged as a war criminal in, in, after the war. And uh, when the wrong people get in power, uh, you can lose your country. <laughs> and, and I had to leave the country of my birth because of the situation there politically. But anyway, just a few weeks after we left, the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. And uh, we always wondered how the people were we knew in, in Japan. And the only people, the only person who survived the firestorm in Tokyo who was in our household was my nurse Cheko Watanabe, who was just an angel of a person. And she visited the United States uh, after the war. And after she saw this country, she, uh, she said, why in the world did Japan think they could defeat a country this large and this industrious? And uh, anyway, she went back to Japan and unfortunately, she passed away later, and uh, anyway, I think of her almost as my mother, because she was so, I learned Japanese from her, and spoke Japanese so well at that time, that I spoke it better than English. And uh, not having any, anybody to speak it to, after I got here, uh, I've, I've lost my Japanese ability to speak completely. So I can't do anything in Japanese anymore. But anyway, that's where I think I got, I got my interest in, uh, in art. Uh, well, I, I, I live to paint. Uh, I think that's why I've outlived all my friends. <laughs> uh, all the people that I went to school with who paint are no longer here. I went to school in Philadelphia. and. Uh, all of my classmates, I, I, don't, I can't think of one who's alive now, but they, uh, when I graduated, I won the major award in, at the Philadelphia Museum College of Art, and they asked me to teach there. And uh, sometimes I think it was a mistake of my life that I, I didn't accept their invitation to, to teach there, because it was a wonderful area at that time. But uh, anyway, it was a, a beautiful city, and I lived outside the city in Media, Pennsylvania, and uh, commuted into Philadelphia. And many, many famous painters worked in that area, including Thomas Aikens, Andrew Wyeth, who uh, I think is a genius of my time. And uh, I was uh, enchanted with his work. Uh, well, I have a very good friend uh, named Joe Simi who I exhibited with when I lived in Winston-Salem in the 1970s. And he and I have exhibited in the Realist Invitations at Sika in Old Salem. And uh, he, uh, he has about 40 paintings in this show at the Bellamy Mansion in, uh, in Wilmington. And, uh, I could only come up with about six paintings, but anyway, we're both in this show together, and uh, uh, I think it's an interesting show. The, the place it's in is interesting in itself, 
It's a, a mansion that was built by a very wealthy doctor, I think, in the Wilmington area years and years ago. And uh, I encourage anybody to see it, if, if only to see the Bellamy Mansion. So uh, anyway, they're having an opening on the 27th uh, for this show, and we'll both be there to greet people. And I hope that uh, everybody comes.